Well, hello everybody and welcome to Vinyl Treasures. I'm your host, Johnny G. John Galindo coming to you live each and every Thursday only here on YouTube. Want to welcome you to the March 28th, 2024 Vinyl Treasure Show as we continue with the uh, 1957 Relic Countdown. I was almost ready to cancel the show today. It was that not a good day today? And uh, dealing with a situation here that my father is not good, but... Um, they forced me, <laughs> my mother and uh, Grace, who is uh, here today uh, helping, they said, no, John, you got to go do the show. You got to get away from this madness here. So uh, I am here, try to be as uh, positive as I can be here for this uh, music here. So welcome to the Vinyl Treasure Show as we continue with the countdown here. But we opened up um, uh, today's show with the pianist, organist, uh, from Philadelphia, PA, signed with Sid Nathan's King record label in 1953. And he continued to record all the way, I think, to 1971, if I'm not mistaken. But I featured his 25th of 67 releases on the King record label. And that's just on 45s. He also has a number of EPs. I don't know if he did LPs. I would think he would have. But uh, his name, Mr. Bill Doggett. Bill Doggett there from January 57 on King Records. A song called Rambunctious is the name of the tune. Charter number 67 on Billboard, a big number four record. If you were tuned into WUST in Bethesda, Maryland, there you go. I ran out of 1957 records from Mr. Earl Bostick when they identified that record as some foreign record last week. And they blocked the show, unfortunately, so I'm sorry uh, the show was blocked. They won't let me remove it. That's the YouTube brass here. But uh, I'm kind of, I'm kind of worried about today. I have some big, I have some hits. Although I had hits last night in the 60s show, the Barbara George, they didn't, they didn't come on till late, but I don't think they blocked the show. But anyway, so thank you all for being here. And uh, we left off at number 99 uh, last week with the Collegians, a great record on the extra label. Let's go for a ride. Let's pick it up with number uh, 98 on the survey with 131 points and 10 mentions. This is the flip side of entry number uh, 176, a song called Tears on My Pillow, which was the group's ninth release on Vivian Carter's VJ record label. They recorded this at the last session held for VJ Records. It features Perkley Moses on lead. It's a song he wrote coming in at number 98 from July 57. The Eldorados on VJ. It's called A Rose for my darling number 98 A rose oh. for you, dear Grown in heaven above It was meant to be worn By only you <laughs> With this rose oh. I give my love But love me, and if 
your love is true we won't part oh, this rose and my love and believe what my lips say and may I always bring a rose I know if your love is true I know we'll Those are the Eldorados, the Eldorados, Perkerly Moses, and the Eldorados coming in at number 98 on the survey from July 1957. A Rose for My Darling is the name of the tune. That's on Vivian Carter's VJ Records. That's their ninth release. Let's move to entry number 97 now. It's the flip side of uh, a song we heard at number 421 came out on the Flip record label out of Hollywood, California. The song was called Do You Love Me? And uh, But this flip side here scores with 121 points and 12 mentions as uh, uh, shortly after Richard Berry and the Pharaohs released Louie Louie, the group recorded this song with uh, written by Richard Berry, who was doing the bass on this, and uh, I think also comes in on the bridge, but the lead singer on this is Godoy Gilbert. Godoy Gilbert, they changed their name to The Cyclones. This is from June 57, number 97. The Cyclones on the flip label. The song is called My Dear. The stars in your eyes, they'll be shining with the sweetest delight. How I love to hold you all oh, so tight, cause I love you, my dear. Sounds of California here on the Vinyl Treasure Show. They're called the Cyclones, a.k.a. Richard, really Richard Berry and the Pharaohs there from June 1957. It's on the Flip record label. My Dear is the name of the tune coming in at number 97. Let's move to number 96 now. This group from Brooklyn, New York comes in uh, with their fourth song on the survey. And the flip side of number 395 
uh, which we was called uh, What You Do to Me. Now, the others to make the survey were number 257, where there's a will, there's a way. Number 129 was hands across the table. And this one at number 96 is their hardest 45 to find, probably their most expensive, coming in with 131 points and 12 mentions. And someone voted this their number one song, their second release on Jerry Winston's Onyx record label. And... Uh, the original base of the group he left after the their first release and then uh, um, his name was Marvin Holland he was replaced by Charles Moffat with this release it features Jerome Ramos on lead from March 1957 at number 96 the Velours the Velours on the Onyx label and their tune called Romeo <laughs> go that is a cool record i bought (laughs) it wasn't cheap i can tell you that much there you go boy those are those are the velours the velours from march 1957 that's their second release on jerry winston's onyx record label coming in at number 96 romeo is the name of the tune and uh, that one there spence wooten the late spence wooten brought a bunch of 45s to the house i needed some big records at the time and that was in there and it was a nice copy too and uh uh, he uh, got me some really nice records in my collection. I have to say that I do miss Spence a lot. Let's continue here with the countdown. Entry number 95 is the uh, second song by this group to make the survey. Now, we heard uh, their first release at uh, number 134, a song called I Love My Girl. This is their second release, and believe it or not, on Archie Blyer's cadence record label not many uh, vocal groups on that label at least r&b vocal groups but uh, coming in at not with that third 132 points and 12 mentions it features the former lead singer of the diamonds that recorded for the atlantic record label his name was sonny wright and uh, this is uh with dave mccray and his orchestra from october 1957 at number 95 they're called the metronomes the metronomes on the cadence label it's called how much i love you at number 95. <laughs> How much 
Sonny Wright and the Metronomes coming in at number 95 on the survey. That's their second release on the Cadence record label, the same label that had um, the Cordettes and Andy Williams and uh, uh, who was it? It Was it Jimmy Roselli? No, it wasn't Jimmy Roselli. Uh, who else was on that label? Lenny Welch was on that label, but much later. He was recording, I think, for Decca at the time. Had some good records on Decca, too, but uh, lots of pop records on the label, but not that one there. October 1957, the Metronomes at number 95 with How Much... I love you. Johnny G's here on a Thursday afternoon. If you're new to the program here, just finding out about it, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. This is our second show that I do here on YouTube. I was here last night at 9 p.m. Eastern time with the Soul 45s out of my collection. Tony Crosby in our YouTube chat room, he sent me five requests. I don't get a lot of requests, but I do, I've been getting some. I think I got 18 requests last for last night's show. So if you do have a request for that show or Saturday night show, send it in at vinyltreasures at AOL.com. It's a little bit late for that Saturday show. I already received. Thank you all for abiding by my rules of, of being able to rece- get these requests early because I have to pull them out ahead of time and and uh, give Charlene time to work a- on getting some of the information together. So uh, thank you for uh, doing that. But uh, again, this is our second show. And uh, click the bell to get notifications. Give me a thumbs up if you like what I'm doing here. And I'm playing original records out of my collection as we continue here. I was worried about this record, this next entry at number 94. I wasn't I wasn't worried about the flip side. Uh, but the A side of this record comes in at number 132 with 14 mentions. And we heard the flip side of this way back at number 518, a song called I Hope You Won't Hold It Against Me. This singer was a member of the Lamplighters originally, and then uh, they recorded for Federal Records, of course. But he left the group to go solo. He signed with Eddie and Leo Mesner's Aladdin record label, and this was his first of 11, and probably, i got to consider it his biggest hit. This was a number nine record on Cashbox, number six on Billboard, and I'm cringing to play this, but I will. It's from October 1957, number 94 on the Aladdin label. It's Thurston Harris and the Sharps with a little bitty pretty one, number 94. Mm-hmm. 
hits here on the Vinyl Treasure Show. Didn't see the copyright police, thankfully. They would, usually they won't come out in the first two hours. Maybe around the third hour they start giving me problems, but not, not with that record. Thank goodness. There you go. Thurston Harris and the Sharps, October 1957. That's the, his first release on the Aladdin record label coming in at number 94. Little Bitty Pretty One, of course. Um, uh, who covered that? Uh Frankie Lyman. Frankie Lyman covered that tune also. As we continue here on the Vinyl Treasures show, up next, this group from Harlem, New York. Uh, uh, we heard them, uh, well, actually, this entry, number 93, with 133 points and 12 mentions, and one person voted this their number one song, uh, and uh, the, we heard them at number 278 with the song called Sugar, Sugar, and this is uh, with their 10th release for Jerry Blaine's Josie record label. This was the follow-up, the very next record, their 11th. It features Bobby Spencer on lead, it, uh, written by the group's manager, Esther Navarro, and the band leader, uh, Jesse Belvin. Uh, Jesse Belvin, how about Jesse Powell, Johnny? Jesse Powell, who was also the orchestra behind this group. Let's go to May of 1957, entry number 93, the Cadillacs on the Josie label. It's called Broken Heart. My heart was broken, dear, broken, dear When I heard those words in my, ear, in my ear When you said that we were through, we were through. You had found someone, new. found someone new My head was in a spell I felt like Daniel in the lion's den Tell me what could I do On this earth without you the great sound of the Cadillacs there coming in at number 93 on the survey Bobby Spencer on lead for that one May 1957 Broken Hearts is the name of that one on uh, Jerry Blaine's Josie record label let's go back to Chicago we just heard from this group today to open up the survey at number 98 with their ninth release on VJ records called a rose for my darling well they returned at entry number 92 which uh, scored 135 points and, thir and 13 mentions. This was their 
10th release on the VJ record label again featuring Perkle Lee Moses on lead. The song uh, should though have been included in the 1958 survey. This is a major screw up on this and only because uh, you shouldn't screw this one up because if you check the matrix numbers on the VJ records, I think from the inception of the series, the uh, first two uh, numbers in the matrix number give the year it was recorded. So this is this matrix number is 58 dash. 814. So this was recorded in 1958, early 58, because it was released in January of 1958. So this should have been in the following year's survey. Another big mistake. Surprising this mistake is here. But anyway, still a great record to feature here at number 92. January 58, the El Dorado's return on the VJ record label is called Three Reasons Why. There are three reasons why I love you with all my heart There are three reasons why Why I care To our mama Number one, you're an angel from heaven above, darling. It's you I'm thinking of. Well, there are three reasons why I love you. Here is reason number. You make me happy when I'm sad, when we're together, gee, I'm glad, well, there are three reasons why I love you. a great record i have to say that's a Perkley moses and the el dorados uh, from january 58 but you know what it's great to play that record here on the 57 survey the el dorados on vj records with three reasons why i'm going to give you three reasons why to tune into johnny g and the vital trader show especially if you're a collector number one because you get to see these cool labels and some rare ones too out of my collection you get to hear the original vinyl and because johnny g sounds good on the radio don't i not that i like to boast i don't because i am uh, an amateur disc jockey i'm not a professional voice disc jockey i'm just uh, say what i feel and play the records but i hope you dig what i do as we continue here on the vinyl treasure show let's go to memphis tennessee for entry number 91 on the survey and it's a flip side of entry number 378 this is on bill briggs oj label a song called my baby left me but the flip comes in at number one uh, i'm sorry at number 91 
with 139 points and 12 mentions, and one person voted this as their number one song. The group is originally, though, out of Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, what this group did is they used the arrangement of another song uh, on their record, an arrangement done first by the Harp Tones on the Rama label. If you're familiar with a song called That's the Way It Goes, they use that same arrangement for their record here coming in at number 91. They're called the Rockin' Dukes. The Rockin' Dukes from September 57, number 91 on OJ Records. It's called Angel and a Rose. In a dream that I had of a picture and a bow, when it came into vision, stood an angel and a rose. Started from heaven and ended in my arms. My prayers were answered. From unearthly charms Image of Venus The goddess of the sun Her beauty enchanted In the heart I don't know why this angel Was sent to me But deep in my heart, I felt we'd never part. For in my arms, I held hope and love. So disappointed when she left for the sky. She left her kiss and words of goodbye. Those are the Rockin' Dukes. The arrangement there sounding so much like Willie Winfield and the harp tones. That's the way it goes. September 1957. Angel and a Rose. It's on the OJ record label out of Memphis, Tennessee. I'm sure possibly if Raul Sita heard this, he probably would have sent them a letter to cease and desist and probably sue them for that, but we probably didn't hear it. I don't know how big this record got out of uh, either Tennessee, uh, where it was pressed, or maybe in Atlanta, Georgia. But anyway, uh, I digress. As we continue here on the Vinyl Treasure Show, here is another screw-up on the survey coming in at number 90 uh this uh, song originally released in june of 1956 so this should have been included in the previous year's survey but uh, not this the 1957 survey but either way this group from the bronx new york scored 136 points in 12 mentions and one number one vote for this song it's on danny robinson's holiday record label the group was called the harmonaires and the song written by the lead singer of the group, his name is Clint Holland. And uh, the bass of this group, his name is Albert George. He would later become the bass of the Bonnevilles that recorded for the Munich record label. Let's go to number 90 here on the survey, although released in June of 56. Still a worthy play, even we cheat a little bit. The Harmon Airs on the holiday label. The song is called Lorraine at number 90 on the survey. Do 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 
darling. While sitting here between the golden walls of love, thinking of you. You told me, darling, that love was just a simple little word. And love sure has come true. Just for me and for you. agree with pat that's a great tune there by the harman airs the harman airs uh, from june 56 this is not a 1957 record but it's on the danny robinson's holiday record label lorraine is the name of the two now two other members of this group uh bob trotman and andre lilly would later join norman fox and the rob roys uh, when they were recording for the backbeat record label they became members of uh, the Rob Roy's and I remember Greg Surigo many years ago sold me this record. He goes, Johnny, do you need do you need the Harmon Airs on the holiday label? I said, Well, I do have the uh, shiny red second press, uh, which I think I paid thirty bucks for. But he said, Well, I got a really nice. You're not going to have to upgrade this copy, and he was correct. <clears throat> nice copy that Greg Surik, the late Greg Surik, found for Johnny G. Johnny G here on a Thursday afternoon. Hope you're digging on the tunes. If you're new to the program, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Tell your friends about it. Labor of love that I do. Thank you all for being here and also gracious with your kind words and the thoughts for the show. As it really means a lot, it makes it all worthwhile for me. But I get enjoyment too. This is the only time that I get to play my records, especially with what I'm going through here at the house. It's very difficult dealing with an elderly parent, one of the parents, that is very difficult. And uh, I try to work through this, and I am. And uh, it's going to be okay, I know, at the end. But uh, anyway, so thank you all for being here. As we continue, we continue. How about a twin spin? A twin spin on the Holiday Record label. As this group, they hail from Brooklyn, New York. This is their third song to make the survey. Uh, their two previous uh, songs on Danny Robinson's Holiday label with both sides of their second release from August of 57, number 456, a song called uh, Don't Go, and at number 281, one of my favorites by them called If I Could Make You Mine. And the A-side to their first release comes in at number 89 on the survey with 141 points and 13 mentions. Now, this was the group's biggest hit and also the biggest seller on Danny Robinson's holiday record label i think it was the number 13 record on the r&b chart it features johnny hicks on lead let's go to may of 1957 at number 89 the love notes on the holiday label the song is called united whoops do 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 Till the end. 
eternity This love will stay Yes, and every way From now and days to come go that's the debut single for the love notes the love notes on uh, danny robinson's holiday record label from may 57 song entitled united that's johnny hicks on lead of course prior to this he was lead singer for a group called the ivories that recorded for the jaguar record label now my aunt didn't have the 45 on this but she did have it on the rumble album i know that is what collectors call that uh, lp that great that's my i think that's the greatest compilation album uh, out there on jubilee records the rumble album battle of the groups and it was funny because uh, i just dis- or she destroyed the cover and i would ask her i said mary uh, what does the cover look like she goes well these two guys these guys with leather jackets and they got these chains and they're fighting it's like a battle of the groups and of course it was a battle of the love notes the continentals the bop chords and the channels all great groups great new york city vocal group harmony so if you don't have that lp i recommend you get it's on c it's also on cd too i think uh i forget who put it out uh but it's uh, and they added some bonus tracks on that but it's a great lp i have to say and i don't collect lps although i got about three thousand lps in my collection anyway johnny g babbles on here let's continue here on the survey entry number 88 now with uh 142 points and 10 mentions and one number one selection this group from newport news virginia uh and uh they had eight this is their eighth song to make the survey and these aren't even the aladdin cuts these are the capital cuts but um this is uh they recorded originally for eddie and leo mesner's aladdin records uh this is their 11th on the capital label this song though originally done by vicky young in 1956 also on the capital label and uh, she wrote the tune along with dave Kavanaugh. now it features rudy west on lead and this was a number one record if uh if you were listening to wcae in pittsburgh pennsylvania number 88 on the survey from february 57 the great five keys rudy west and the five keys on capital it's called let there be you number 88 let there be light and there was a light 
Let there be earth And there was earth If I had my way I would ask of him Please let there be you sure Let there be rain And there was rain Up above If I had my way I would ask of him Please let there be you You are the feeling of spring You are the beginning of dawn I would ask of him, please let that be you, please let that be you. That's Rudy West and the Five Keys coming in at number 88 on the survey from February 1957 on the Capitol Record label, Let There Be You. Boy, they really made their mark on this survey. A number of the groups uh, did. Uh, this was, uh, 1957 was a big year What for the Dell Vikings, for the uh, the uh, the Five Keys, I think, and for this group that we're playing too. This group also had a number of uh, this next entry a uh, number 87 with 142 points and 14 mentions. This is the group's a uh, fifth song to make the survey. Uh, others were at number 553 with The Mystery of You. Number 552 was only because number 275, He's Mine with the female of the group on lead. And number 135, a song called I'm Sorry. But this is their eighth release on the Mercury label, a tune written by Buck Ram and uh, charted number 24 on Billboard, number 7 on the R&B chart, a big number 2 record on WILY in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Features Tony Williams on lead. Let's go to April of 1957, number 87, By the Platters, on the Mercury label. It's called My Dream. Just a dream. It's the answer to wanting only my dream is a true. Delight My escape At night From a world That's blue
I read is a wealth of joy. No one can destroy when I dream my dream is no common dream it's a wondrous dream that's number 87 on the relic survey tony williams and the platters on the Mercury record label from April 57, My Dream is the name of the tune. They're probably not done either. <laughs> I, may, I don't know. I don't think they're done as I went back because we're starting to count down here. We, we are at number 88 now as uh, the flip side of this. I'm sorry, 86. I tell you, I tell you, I went to the uh, I went to the eye doctor on uh, Tuesday, and uh, I was telling her that uh, you know I'm having trouble with my right eye because it's constantly tearing. So she said, "Well, you have that eye is really dry, and that's going to cause your eye to tear. So you got to put some drops in your eye. I'm going to give you the drops to use." And I also told her that my you know my vision has been blurry. So she took some snapshots of my eye, my inner eye and she said well Johnny you are developing cataracts your left eye is worse than your right eye of course they're not ready yet to uh, remove but uh, it will progressively get worse as you age so I guess this is part of the aging process and I also went for my leg he said and he was pretty nice the ortho guy he said you don't need me anymore your uh, leg is is fine but uh, it's really my knee that's a problem but that's another story but uh, so I'm back to really where I was before that fall but anyway I digress let's continue but I couldn't see I my sixes and eights get messed up so you got to excuse the old man here but uh, let's go to number 86 here with 151 points well I should say uh yes uh, and I'm sorry, not 180, 80, not 186 points, 100, 151 points. We heard the flip side of this at number 151, a song called I Really Love You So, Honey Babe. That was the jump side. The ballad side comes in at number 86 with 149 points and 11 mentions and one ballot had this as a number one song this great group from harlem new york it's their 12th release on high weiss's old town record label the great milton love on lead this is their follow-up actually to walking along i think probably the b-side though from november of 57 the solitaires at number 86 milton love and the solitaires the song is called thrill of love number 86 <laughs>
Say, Joe Shakatano, you must be in your glory today. All these ballads here. That's uh, Milton Love and the Solitaires at number 86 on the survey, November 1957, on uh, High Weiss's Old Town Records. Thrill of Love is the name of the tune. That's their 12th release on the Old Town record label. Let's go to entry number 85 now with 149 points and 12 mentions. This is on Juggy Murray's Sue record label. Actually, it kicked off the label. This is Sue number 700. They had two releases on the Sue label. Both are excellent, in my opinion. This is their first. Uh, the group is called The Matadors. The Matadors, a tune written by the lead singer. His name is Johnny Garfield. This charted number 29 on KDAY out in Los Angeles, California. Let's go to March of 1957. Give a listen to The Matadors, number 85 on the survey. The song is called Vengeance Will be mine, the Matadors. You broke my heart. Oh, oh, oh. 
great record that is there. Those are the Matadors. The Matadors from uh, March of 1957. That is their debut single. Also the first single on the Sue record label. A song uh, written by the lead singer, Johnny Garfield. He's the lead singer there. Vengeance, parentheses, will be mine. Their follow-up is also an excellent ballad called uh, Be Good to Me. Both their records introduced to your host, Johnny G, by the late George Duop Tompkins. That's where I heard that record first when he was at WARY-FM at Westchester Community community college johnny g here on a thursday afternoon hope you're digging on these cool tunes as we are plowing through some very classic sounds of the year 1957 all on original vinyl too so thank you all for being here and i hope you are enjoying the show here as we continue we go to detroit michigan to devora brown's fortune record label as the flip side of this uh, came in at number 239 on the survey, a song called The Mambo of Love, but this is the better side in my opinion. Um, uh, it's by a Nolan Strong and the Diablos. And uh, according to, let me see. <laughs> This is from April of 1957, uh, and uh, this is from April, yeah, April of 1957, coming in with, uh, this is where I get discombobulated here, coming in with 150 points and 13 mentions and one number one vote. Nolan Strong and the Diablo Diablos on Fortune Records, it's called Can't We Talk this over number 84. Can we talk this over? Yeah. 
Sounds of Detroit here on the Vinyl Treasure Show. There you go, Nolan Strong and the Diablos. April 1957, coming in at number 84, Can't We Talk This Over? That's on the Fortune label. That one plays pretty nice, I have to say. The interesting thing about this... Um, this forty, uh, this forty-five came out just before Nolan Strong was drafted into the service. Now, John Ferry, you said you like this side better. I agree with you. According though to the book Mind Over Matter, uh, a great book though put out by uh, the late Billy Miller and Michael Hunt, this was the first Diablo's release to receive a poor review in Billboard. And I would have to disagree. Maybe they didn't like the ballads. I don't know what it was, but that is a great tune by Nolan Strong and the Diablos. Johnny G here on a Thursday. If you like what I'm doing, please give me a thumbs up. Tell your friends about the program, too. This is the uh, second show of the week. I'll be back on Saturday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, back with the 1950s and early 60s. Original Vinyl 45s out of my collection. You can send me requests at vinyltreasures at AOL.com. Let's go to number 83 now. This group from Brooklyn, New York. Uh, this came in with 154 points. And uh, I can't see my writing here. 16 mentions. Um, uh, a group involved, discovered by band leader uh, and songwriter and producer Al Brown. The group members were uh, Sonny Eugene, Clifford Rice, Vic Rice, Charles Saunders, and lead singer on this. His name is Troy Keyes. Collectively, they were known as the Starlights. And uh, this is from July of 1957. It's on the Peak record label, a cool logo. It says Peak tops them all but unfortunately this was not a hit for the group but it's a great tune should have been the starlights from july 57 number 83 it's called missing you you got me missing you missing the joy of What boy is about to do the things I used to do? You've got me blowing around, asking me.
coming in at number 83 on the survey. Those are the, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, folks. Those are the uh, Starlights from July 1957. Troy Keys on lead there. On the peak record label, Missing You is the name of the tune. Of course, Troy Keys, as uh, Big Dave Swinger mentioned, he would uh, join the uh, the lures and he did lead on i'll never smile again and uh yeah that was it back in 1958 johnny g here on a thursday we continue with the countdown we go back to brooklyn new york uh for a b-side this is the group's only release on the melba record label and uh this received i think a number one vote this um this b-side uh, received 159 points, was on 18 ballots, and won number one vote. It's pretty good for a B-side of a 45. Um, and uh, I lost my place. <laughs> this song, co-written by the lead singer of the group, his name is Bill Witt. This is from 1957 at number 82, The Rocket Tones. The Rocket Tones on the Melba label. The song is called D.I. number 82. Do, 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 do. A, that's a killer ballad. All these ballads, Joe Shakatana. You must. We, we're earlier in the survey. There were lots of up tempos. Now these are these are voted by collectors. Here shows you where the collecting market was with the rhythm, with the rhythm and blues vocal groups. There, those are the Rocket Tones. Bill Witt and the Rocket Tones. That's the B side of their 45 on the Melba record label. A uh, song entitled D.I. from 1957. They will return in a few records, so stay tuned for that. Let's move to number 81 here on the survey. We heard the flip side of this uh, at number 299. I should say the intended A side of this at number 299, a song called Hong Kong. 
And this group, also out of Brooklyn, New York, they previously backed up Jimmy Witherspoon on a song called My Girl Ivy. It came out on the Atco record label in 1956. A year later, they signed with Paul Winley's Cyclone record label. And this is the B side of the 45 and the side that I prefer. Coming in at number 81 with... um, Let's see how many points did this score. This was uh, this was 159 points. This also on 18 ballots and one number one selection for this song. I wouldn't uh, wouldn't want to quarrel with that. That is for sure. But these are the Quins. The Quins from the fall of '57. It features Freddie Brown on lead. It's on the Cyclone record label. It's called Oh Starlight. Excuse me, B-Sides here on the Vinyl Treasure Show. There you go at number 81 on the survey from the fall of 1957. A group called the Quins. The Quins on the Cyclone record label, Oh Starlight, is the name of the tune, a record I used to hear on oldies radio back in the early 1970s. Let's continue with the countdown here. This next group, they hail from Bakersfield, California. We heard the flip side of this release at number 271 on the survey, a song called Sheik of Araby, but the uh, flip side comes in at number 80, and this is the better side, in my opinion. Um, this uh, first, this group first recording for Larry Mead's Vita Records back in 1955, but then they fell apart when lead singer Joe Grundy was drafted uh, into the service. The group sort of broke up, but uh, the group was associated with Buck Ram, and he might have even managed them, but he would assign the group to his Antler a label where they had two new releases, and this is their second release. 
with a new lead singer. His name is Eddie Williams. Eddie Williams became the lead singer of this group called The Colts from September 57. The Colts at number 80 on Antler Records. It's called Guiding Angel. on the survey those are the cults eddie williams he's on leave september 1957 that's on buck ram's antler record label guiding angel is the name of the two now we have had how many ballads in a row i forget what was the what was the last up tempo record was it the thurston harris record that i played way back i forget but uh, we finally get to an oh, oh geez now the uh copyright police come out here what a bummer i'm telling you they are on this record are you kidding me I don't know. I don't know what is their issue, but let's go back to Brooklyn and we uh, hear the intended A side of this 45 that we just heard at number 82. You heard the ballad from 1957 called D.I. came out on Morty Craft's Melba record label. This is the intended A side and a record that I used to hear on the Gus Gossard show. And it was uh, became more popular in the early 1970s than when it was originally released. And again, it features the lead of Bill Witt on lead. This is from 1957 with 168 points and 25 mentions here are the rocket tones the rocket tones return i'm going to send this one out to adrian viterbo listening in mexico because the name of the tune is called mexico <laughs> Bye. 
There you go. I don't know why they just cut it off with that cold ending at the end there. It's kind of like they they snipped it off there for some reason, but still a great tune there coming in at number 79 on the survey from 1957. That's the intended A-side. A song entitled Mexico on the Amelba record label, Bill Witt on Lee. That received 25 mentions. 25 ballots put that. I probably put that on my ballot too uh, with 168 points. I know I voted for this next song it's a flip side actually we heard earlier to uh, today at uh, we heard the a side of this at number 89 on uh, danny robinson's holiday record label the hit side called united but this is the b side which i prefer and also my aunt mary prefer because she loved this record she had it i mentioned it on the rumble album they put this on the rumble album um, from may 1957 coming in with 169 points and 15 mentions their first of two on the holiday record label it features johnny hicks on lead number Number 78, The Love Notes, on holiday with their tune called Tonight. If the star runs are gonna shine, oh, if you're gonna be mine, yeah, tonight, it has to happen, darling, tonight. sides here on the vinyl treasure show there you go the uh, love notes there that is the uh, b side to united we heard at number what 83 on the survey this one coming in at number uh, 78 on the survey may 1957 that's johnny hicks on lead tonight is the name of the tune on uh, danny robinson's holiday record label hope you're digging on these cool tunes these are all classic records from the 1950s as voted by collectors back in 1997 and compiled by relic records as we go back to harlem new york we heard from this group earlier uh in the survey at uh number 103 103 on Paul Winley's Winley record label, I'm Falling in Love, was uh, the tune we heard previously. But this is their debut single, their debut single that comes in at number 77 with 170 points and 22 mentions. Uh, The tune uh, written by uh, David Clowney, a.k.a. Dave Dave Baby Cortez. And... uh, 
he uh, he adapted this from a Cole Porter song called So In Love, uh, written for the musical Kiss Me Kate. This is the group's first of seven on Paul Winley's Winley record label. Uh, dual leads on this, Lenny McKay and Adam Jackson doing leads on this. This charted number 37 on WMGM here in New York City, but this is number 77 on the Relic Survey from May 57. The Jesters on the Winley label, their debut single. It's called So Strange. <laughs> the sound of the jesters the jesters coming in at number 77 on the survey from may 1957 that's their debut single on the winley record label so strange is the name of the tune and uh, i have a mint copy of this of the promo somewhere this i found this one out in the wild for five cents you really can't go wrong finding records like this for five cents it's it's only vg at best plays okay there's some surface noise there but i couldn't I couldn't find my mint copy of this as uh, we continue here on the countdown. I have to say I might have to end the show a little early today because uh, of the issues downstairs. So I will uh, I'm going to text them downstairs to see. I might have to shut down at three o'clock, but we'll see. Um, let's continue here. Number seventy eight on the survey. I think this is the eleventh song to make the Relic Survey. This group out of Pittsburgh. Pennsylvania first recording for the Phoebe record label but I've been featuring their records on uh, Phoebe and Mercury and also Dot and Luniverse lots of records by the Dell Vikings we heard uh, uh, we heard um, uh, You Say You Love Me that was on Phoebe we heard the flip side of that too a song called I'm Spinning that was number uh, one. 59 also heard at uh, number 538 the mercury version of i'm spinning no that was i'm sorry cool shake then we heard i'm spinning the mercury version number three at 362 at three 
332. We heard Jitterbug Mary on the Mercury label. 331. We heard Don't Be a Fool. Featured it on the Phoebe lay. Uh, well, maybe that was Dot. I forget what I featured. We also heard What Made Maggie Run, which was number 288. And also Somewhere Over the Rainbow, that was a Luniverse release. At number 249 and 245, Come Along With Me on the Mercury record label. I didn't know what to, which one to play with entry number uh, 76 because I have this both on the Phoebe label and the... Uh, and the uh, dot label charlene's got the mercury label here so that's not correct um but uh, i'm gonna play it on dot records i like this ballad by them it features crip johnson on lead uh from september of 1957 the dell vikings this is the dot version it's called when i come home <laughs> Besides here on the Vinyl Treasure Show, there you go. Those are the Dell Vikings. Crip Johnson and the Dell Vikings uh, with 174 points and 14 mentions. Let me just check something uh, for a second on this. Uh, from August of 1957, um, this is two minutes and 50 seconds here on this uh, 45 let me see what the um what the phoebe is for a second because they said it was different cuts if i'm not mistaken so this one is um is two minutes and 35 seconds so what's different about the this isn't in great shape but it's a hard record um wait a minute uh, two minutes and 47 seconds that's not that bad this is the flip side of what made maggie run uh, when I come home, I think I also have it uh, with 
uh uh is that the name of the record but let me see let me see if this is let's hear if this is a little different we'll just play a little bit of it it's not that clean I featured that. That had, that had a cool guitar break there. That's not on the dot release, so it is a different. It's a different take that they did, and I don't know how they. I don't know how the masters got you know got distributed to dot records and whatnot, but uh, that definitely is a different take there. Or they they eliminated that guitar break, which I think was pretty good, by the way. But there you go. We played two versions at number seventy six. We featured the dot version from August of fifty seven and the Phoebe. I forget when that if that came out first 
or not. But uh, there you go, Crip Johnson and the Dell Vikings when I come home. Well, Johnny G is home here, and uh, I thought I was going to end at 3, but I'm not because my sister's not here yet. But uh, I may have to, uh, when she arrives, may have to just scoot out of here. So uh, you'll have to bear with Johnny G. Let's go back to Philadelphia now. Uh, we were just in Pennsylvania, uh, Pittsburgh with the Dell Vikings. We go to Philadelphia now with a <clears throat> flip side. Uh, we heard the B side of this 45 at number 156, a song called I Am Lonely. And it's the group's debut single, first issued on a uh, K. Williams Jr. record label. And of course, Dick Clark, very instrumental with getting this record uh, to become a big, big hit because he played it quite a bit on American Bandstand. And you can tell if you have the copy on Ember Records, if yours says Wildcat Music, that's one of uh, the publishing companies uh, that uh, Dick Clark had a piece of. So uh, he would indirectly get a money from these records records being played he pay, pay for promotion is what he did but you know what we never would have heard the records if he didn't do that so there you go that's a small price we have to pay i guess but he made millions yes he did but uh, this is the intended <coughs> a side and i hope the copyright police don't come after me on this <laughs> I'm featuring it on the original label. This had 176 points, 22 mentions, one number one vote for this for November of 57. It features Bill Horton on lead. These are the silhouettes at number 75 on the survey, featuring it on the junior label. The song is called Get a Job. Dip 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 dip. I then go back to the house, hear yeah, that woman's mouth, preaching and crying, tell me that I'm lying about a job that I never could find. Shalala, shalala, shalala. Here 
on the Vinyl Treasure Show. Those are the silhouettes. Featured it on the original press. It uh, could be a little bit cleaner than that. Yes, it can, but I bought this so many years ago. On the Junior Record Label, um, lost my place here, uh, from November of 1957, the silhouettes, Bill Horton and the silhouettes, uh, with Get a Job, received one number one vote. And uh, that one there, their a debut single, and also their first one on the Ember label would pick it up after Dick Clark became involved with the record. Johnny G here on a Thursday afternoon. Hopefully you're digging on the cool tunes if you're new to the program. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not already done so. Also click the thumbs up if you enjoy what Johnny G is doing and tell your friends about it. As we continue here with the countdown, we go to number six. 74 on the survey this is a flip side we just heard earlier today at number 95 uh, by uh, a group called the metronomes on the cadence record label from october 57 we heard how much i love you well the flip side comes in at number 74 and this is the first song i think to receive two number one votes and this scored 184 points this charted number 29 on kayo in seattle washington it's with sammy Lowe and the orchestra it's the second of two on the cadence label for the metro metro <laughs> The Metronomes. It features Sonny Wright on lead. Of course, I mentioned previously he was the lead singer of the Diamonds on the Atlantic label. This is from October 57, number 74. The Metronomes on Cadence. It's called Dear Don. Do, 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 do. Dear Don. Very nice tune there coming in at number 74 on the survey from October 1957. Those are the metronomes, the great sound of a sunny right on Lee. Dear Don is the name of the tune. That one there, their second of two on the Cadence record label has moved to number 73. Now we heard the flip side of this record at uh, number... Uh, 
312. 312 on the survey, a song called Sweetheart, Please Don't Go. And they had another record or song to make the survey, number 372, uh, Come Home to uh, Coming Home to You, both on uh, Ernie, um, Ernie Young's Excello record label, I guess out of Nashville, Tennessee. I guess this would be considered uh, their big hit, really. I played this cover of this, which might have gotten my show blocked uh, last week, as done by the Diamonds, who had the bigger hit with this. But this is the original uh, by this group from Lancaster, South Carolina. Uh, they uh, got together while they were in high school uh, and then uh, signed with uh, Ernie Young Excello record label. He signed them. They had four releases on the Excello label. This was their debut single written by the lead singer. His name is Maurice Williams. This was a big number three record on WFOX in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And, uh, of course, mentioned Covered by the Diamonds, which I featured here last week on the Mercury label. But um, this had 184 points and 20 mentions from December. Actually, it has a December 56 release here. So that's uh, good enough for government work, I'll say. Let's give a listen to the Gladiolas. The Gladiolas at number 73. Uh, with Maurice Williams on lead. This is the original version of Little Darlin' at number 73 on the survey. Is the original version of a little darling as done by the gladiolas maurice williams on lead number 73 on the survey initially released in december of 1956 it's on ernie young's excello records out of memphis tennessee little darling there and of course the gladiolas would evolve to maurice williams and the zodiacs of course they had a big hit in 1960 with a song entitled stay let's continue here and move to number 72 we heard the flip side of this and this shows the the collectors that voted for this because if you were an average listener of the music and i don't mean that in a negative way i mean if you were listening to top 40 radio and voted in this survey you would have no clue about this next 45 it would only be known by collectors at the time and uh, we heard the flip side of this a song called valerie at number 
251. This group from Queens, New York, they were called the Premiers. And uh, the flip side comes in at number 72 with 185 points and 17 collectors that knew about this song. Uh, this is from July of 1957, a rare 45 on George Golner's Gone Record label, the premieres at number 72 with Is It a Dream? One smile. One touch, a kiss that means all the world to me. My heart sings on like a symphony. Is this a dream? Forty-fives here on the Relic Countdown from 1957. That's on George Golner's Gone Record label. A group called The Premieres, released in July of 1957. Is it a dream? Is the name of the tune. And of course, uh, <laughs> what would I want to say? Um, some of the copies of this doesn't they don't play that song is it a dream they play let me share your dreams kind of a screw up at the pressing plant but uh, that is the original uh, song there is it a dream at number 72 let's continue here number 71 it is a b-side by this great group out of Harlem New York we heard them earlier on the survey at a uh, number uh, 86, we heard, heard Thrill of Love on uh, High Weiss's Old Town record label. But uh, this is, I think, the follow-up to that coming in at number uh, 71 from January of 1957. This great group called The Solitaires, uh, they had 18 releases on High Weiss's Old Town record label between 1954 and 1961. And uh, two great lead singers, Milton Love and Herman Curtis, or, or Herman Dunham, take your pick. But this is the B-side to their 12th release on Old Town, and it features Herman Curtis on lead with 186 points and 17 mentions. The Solitaires at number 71 on the Old Town label. It's called Please Kiss This Letter, number 71. Please kiss this letter. I send to Tell you what my lips refuse. 
used to say Please kiss this letter For you must see That with each line I send A little part of me Well, my hands caress them Sides here on the Vinyl Treasure Show. There you go. Those are the solitaires. Great tune there. Please kiss this letter. Herman Curtis on Lee, January 1957, High Weiss's Old Town Record Label, number 71. As we continue here, we move to 19, 19, how about we move to number 70 here on the survey, this group from Baltimore, Maryland, and uh, they recorded for Zell Sanders, J&S Records, a label out of the Bronx, New York, but she heard this group singing uh, uh, when she was uh, backstage at a show that she was attending, and at the time they were known as the Ecuadors, but she didn't like that name. She said, "You got to change your name to the Plants," and she signed them to her JNS record label. The result was this 45. This is their debut single. Uh, it features George Jackson on lead. We go to October of 1957, coming in with 187 points and 19 uh, ballots. Uh, this was on 19 ballots and one number one vote for this song, By the Plants. October 57 on JNS Records. It's called Dear I Swear. Oh, Love, do 
A group out of Baltimore, Maryland, there, number, number 70 on the survey from October 1957. That's on Zell Sanders' JNS record label. Uh, George Jackson on lead, song entitled Dear I Swear. That's going to do it for Johnny G and the Vinyl Treasure Show. Hope you enjoyed these cool records out of the year 1957 here. The, 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 starting now, these are great classics from the year of, for, of vocal group harmony. Those that collect this music or know this music, you're familiar with a lot of these records. And uh, always great to hear these sounds, especially on you know original vinyl here. So I'm glad that I can present these records on original for you and hope you're enjoying the tunes here. Again, if you have not yet done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, click the bell to get notifications as uh, i'm gonna have to end the show a little bit early today gotta go see what's going on downstairs i almost didn't do the show today but uh i uh, better head down there because uh, they're gonna need me down there with my father he is uh an issue now in his old age but uh, thank you all for being here thank you charlene again for all your help we're gonna play one more record a great new york city sound actually we heard the flip side of this at um uh, number 261, the B-side called Soft and Sweet. But uh, I always loved this uh, song here. And I remember because, uh, well, used to, and I was young at the time, and uh, my grandmother had an apartment house, and they lived on the upstairs, and my they would go shopping on Saturday. And my aunt, my aunt would have to clean the house. And what they do in Italian houses is they have to polish the furniture so i remember my grandfather used to work as an inspector for general motors at the uh, north terrytown plant and he used to he used to have these mitts that you put your hand in and you would feel the uh, the cars you you'd have to uh, inspect the cars if there were no bumps on the on the paint job and he would do that and I, he would bring these mitts home and my aunt would polish the furniture the end table and whatnot and i forget i remember this polish i think it was called ho does anybody remember a polish called ho it's in a big thing it was kind of like milky milky white or milky uh, beige and she would pour she pour it on the furniture and she and she'd play records and I was there, I, I, I vaguely remember it, I would be there, and she had, as I mentioned, the Rumble album. So one of those days, she said to me, we're going to write the lyrics to this song. So she sat there with me, and she was writing the lyrics to this song that I'm playing, and it was one of her favorites on the album, and we're going to close the show with this tonight. Um, number 69 with 190 points and 20 mentions and I'm sure I voted for this song um, the group uh, is from wait wait what did I say here 
<laughs> they're from Brooklyn, B- Brooklyn, New York. And uh, this is their first of two on Bobby Robinson's Whirling Disc record label. This is the great New York City sound. This is the sound of vocal group harmony in New York City. Came out in February 57. Number 69 on the survey is by the Continentals. The Continentals, it features Hermit Montgomery on lead. It's a great dancing tune, I have to say. Number 69 the continentals with picture of love that's going to do it for johnny g again uh i'll be on saturday night beginning at 9 p.m eastern time so join me there if you have any requests you can send them to me at vinyl treasures at aol.com and uh if i don't see any if i don't see you on saturday night i want to wish everybody a happy easter and uh again thank you all for being a part of the program it's fun for me as you can tell but uh, sometimes things interfere with this but i got things to do so thank you all for being here and being so appreciative of that thank you charlene again for your help i gotta go we're going to close with the continentals just want to say everybody so long my darling my darling i'll love you i'll love you forever and ever and ever Oh